Hello, everyone. On this episode of Kindred Spirits, Lighthearted Beat 'em Ups. Developed by Kaneko and released in 1989 by Sammy for North America, DJ Boy is a fast paced, side scrolling beat 'em up game featuring two distinct ports one for Japanese home consoles and one for the US arcade market. In this review, we will focus on the more tamed down US arcade release. You play as Bob or Tom, depending on one or two player mode, who are breakdancing skaters enjoying their boombox tracks. A gang of thieves appear and steal the boombox. Bob, or Bob and Tom, must hunt down the gang to get back their stuff, using all of their groovy roller skate fighting tricks and street attitude. Gameplay consists of skating around and using a few basic moves, punch, kick, jump, and jump kick. The trouble with this simple gameplay is the fact that everyone is constantly moving around and rarely stay in one place long enough to mount any kind of planned attack. Goons randomly skate in all directions and often spend most of the level completely clear of your fists. Compounding this issue is a razor thin hitbox and sluggish control input, causing the majority of your attacks to miss completely. Bosses are a little less iffy as they have a larger hitbox and often use close combat tactics. Sometimes a clever goon will mount a sneak attack using the different stage backgrounds as props. Graphics are mid-level quality with detailed and smooth sprite animations. It is odd how the game engine runs so smooth, yet the user input has a definite heavy, almost laggy feel. I've noticed some of the character designs, in particular the first and last stage bosses. The Japanese home console versions depict a rather unflattering persona of a large black lady with overdone and frankly racist features. Her attacks include a powerful flatulent blast. The American production company, Sammy, toned down a lot of the edgier parts of the game for the arcade release. The 1980s had a very different culture. In today's world, even the American release would likely incite riots in the streets. Sounds are clean and well sampled. Nothing is too loud or too quiet. The protagonist's voiceover was provided by Wolfman Jack, with the stage music being balanced and upbeat. DJ Boy is a fast-paced comedy beat-em-up meant to be a fun parody of, at the time, modern stereotypes. Many of the over-the-top animations are a hoot and fun to watch, while some border on the cringe. Leave it to the Japanese to highlight our cultural landscape in a hilarious and insulting manner. We give this game a 6 out of 10. Developed by Taito and released for North American arcades in 1991, Rula is a side-scrolling action game filled with bright colors and acid-trip-induced characters. Radish Land is a place of magic and mystery, where time is kept flowing by the use of special keys wielded by special people. One day, a mysterious character appears and begins stealing all of the keys, causing the land to warp into strange vistas and turning natives into bizarre characters. In the main village, an old man gives two children magic sticks and tests them with setting things right. Gameplay is, at its core, a basic beat-em-up with few combat moves. The magic stick has only two attacks, a simple bash attack, and a powerful special move that conjures a number of random, over-the-top action sequences that deal damage in various ways. Use of this special feature is limited. A nice addition to this game is a nascent sense of an RPG-type adventure, with a map stage and various points to travel. While there is no real choice involved as to where you go, it certainly invokes a sense of things to come in the computer game world. Goons and bosses all have distinct and well-designed combat sequences, while simultaneously given a sense of one eating too many magic mushrooms. Graphics are bright, clean, and anime-inspired, with a great deal of creativity put into each character. Animations are very smooth and richly detailed. Use of digitized photos in some of the backgrounds and sprites adds a creative sense of disharmony as the story progresses. Many depict scenes that are risque, such as the lady leg doorway and the snot bubble attack, while others are downright bizarre.
Sounds are top notch with clean sampling and melodious harmony, both engaging and at times a bit creepy. The music score is well done. Pulirula is another fantastic example of Japanese creativity and cultural strangeness. The game engine is superb while the content is fun, engaging, and mind-bending. It is worth your time to reach the ending credits. The game itself feels right at home on consoles as ports were made for the Sega Saturn and both the PlayStation and PlayStation 2. We give the arcade version of Pulirula a 9 out of 10. Developed by two guys and released for the Atari Lynx in 1992, Kung Fu is an odd, slow-paced, food-based beat-em-up. After making an escape from a top-secret lab with vials of chemicals, you return home and place the unusual chemicals in the freezer. Forgetting to shut the freezer door, the mutagenic compounds turn you into a little green dude. You must fight your way through the refrigerator, now full of weaponized vegetables, and out to the garden sprinkler in hopes of washing off the bizarre goop. Gameplay consists of straightforward punching and kicking enemies while dodging an array of unlikely attacks and environmental obstacles. Each stage has a level boss with an array of attacks. Controls are somewhat awkward as the hitbox is incredibly small and the creatures you attack are rather difficult to hunt down effectively as you must kill them all to progress. Your health bar drains down quickly and must be constantly refilled using power-ups scattered around the stage. A plus for this title is the sheer variety of enemies, as very little is recycled between stages and each level is fairly unique. Graphics are on the limited side with grainy sprites and low detail backgrounds painted using a small color palette. Despite this limitation, the game engine is smooth and has a lot of interesting design choices. Each level invokes a distinct environment filled with appropriate characters, although some of the attacks are a bit head scratching. The health bar is a nightmare of oscillating color and should carry a warning about causing seizures. Sounds are of middle of the road quality with little variants and odd sampling choices, such as the power up notification which comes across as a sliding Atari fart. Each stage has its own music score, adding an upbeat and playful ambience. Kung Fu is one of those awkward titles that has far more potential than execution. The story is unique and the stages are interesting, but somehow it just falls flat. Maybe it's the sketchy controls, the on-rails feel of the game, or the farty sound effect, but at some point it just loses the audience. We give Kung Fu a 5 out of 10. Developed by Now Production and published by Hudson Soft, Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu is a side-scrolling action platform game released for the TurboGrafx-16 in 1991. You play as Jackie Chan, Kung Fu Master, on a journey to save his girlfriend, Josephine. Many lands and enemies stand in your path, and only your martial arts mastery will overcome the challenges you will face. Gameplay consists of several theme-based stages with various combat and gymnastic-like challenges to conquer. Each stage contains various sub-levels and have a boss at the end. Controls are spot on, with various attacks to utilize including punches, low kick, mid kick, high kick, and drop kicks. Also available are various random power-ups that can be used a limited number of times, as well as a powerful charge-up punch that has only five uses per life. More power-ups and health can be randomly obtained by beating up frogs, and food can be earned through bonus stages. You have only one attempt per life and start with five lives. Perfect scores and bonus stages increase the number of continues. Completing this game will be a process of mastering combat attacks, timing, and memorizing enemies and obstacles. Graphics are a pleasure to watch, with a colorful palette and well-animated sprites. There is no hint of stutter or lag. Scenes are very detailed, and some have just a hint of parallax scrolling. Themes match the colors with environmental characteristics, such as cool blues for ice and warm reds for fire and lava, 
giving an immersive feel. Sounds are of mid-level quality with good sampling and clean playback. No sounds are out of place or irritating over long play sessions. Stage music is mostly upbeat and unique for each level. Every once in a while, a game release will come along that defies expectations. Going in, this game appeared to be a generic reskin trying to capitalize off the name recognition alone. What a surprise. This title is the real deal, with high levels of quality and a lot of thought put into each combat move, sprite animation, and stage layout. The challenges are well balanced, meaning that you won't beat this game on the first try, and likely not the second, while still being fun. A port was also made for the Nintendo Entertainment System. We give the TurboGrafx-16 version a 9 out of 10. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button and subscribing to this channel. Jackie Chan's Action Kung Fu is a side-scrolling action... Scratch that one, start over.